sure you subscribe, like, share our video. To the next question, 5 kg of water at 0 degrees C was supplied with 1.72 times 10 to the power 6 joule of it. Calculate its final temperature, given that the specific its capacity of water as a 4,200 joule per kilogram per kelvin. Now, the formula for that problem is it is given by mc change in temperature. So, H equals to mc change in temperature will actually be theta 2 minus theta 1. So, from the question, the quantity of heat that was given is 1.72 times 7 to the power 6 joule equals to the mass of the water is a 5. Why the specific capacity of water is uh, 4,200 joules. So multiply by the temperature that we are giving. The initial one is, uh, is zero. So the final is, uh, we are looking for the final with theta 2 minus is zero. So from there, theta 2 minus zero will give us theta 2. So from there, I can say theta 2 is given by 1.72 times 10 to the power 6 divided by 5 multiplied by 4,200. So, theta 2 will be, will be cost 2. So, from the calculation, the final answer is uh, 81.9 degrees Celsius. So, if we approximate this 9, so the final answer will give us 82 degrees Celsius. So, looking at the options, the correct option is actually option D. The next question. How much it is required to change 3 kg of ice at 0 degrees Celsius to water at the same temperature, given that the specific latent heat of fusion of ice is that's a 33600 joule per kelvin. So that the formula for the question is actually quantity of heat is given by ML. Where this L is the specific latent heat of fusion of ice and m is the mass of the body so from the question the mass of the body is given by what tdkg multiply by td td six zero 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 so multiplying that the final answer will give us h equals to one zero zero eight zero 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 so the correct option sorry zero zero joules so the correct option is actually Option option A. The next question. A fixed mass of gas at 10 degrees Celsius and 60 millimeter of mercury has a volume of 800 cm cubic. Calculate its volume at 30 degrees Celsius at, and 80 mmg. So the formula for the question is a general gas equation. That is a P1. V1 over T1 equals to P2 V2 over T2. So the first the first parameter we are giving the mass of gas at that temperature. We are going to convert that temperature to standard temperature. That is, uh, we add it to 273 degrees Celsius. So our our first pressure is 60. The first volume that first volume we are giving is 800 divided by the first temperature, which is 10. So if you add 10 to 270, that will give us 283 degree Kelvin. So the second parameters is uh, the second period there. That's uh, 80 millimeter of mercury multiplied by, the question says calculate its new volume. So that's a uh, V, V2. Then divided by the second temperature will be 30 plus uh, 270 theory and that will give us a theory or theory Kelvin. So making V the subject of the formula, I want to get 60 multiplied by 800 multiplied by theory or theory divided by 283 multiplied by 80. So V2 equals to from the numerator 60 multiplied by 800 multiplied by theory or theory. So the numerator gives us 145444. Zero 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 divided by two eight three multiplied by eight c. So the numerator the the numerator give us two two six four zero. So dividing the whole factor there one five 
1454400 divided by the denominator. So the final answer gives us V2 equals to 642.4 centimeter cubic. So looking at the option, the correct option will actually be option C, correct to three uh, significant figure. All the following is a component of an electroscope. What's an electroscope? An electroscope is a device for detecting or measuring charge. So if you look at the component of the electroscope, carbon brush is not there, coil is not there, coil is not there. Electrode is a component of a cell. So the correct option is option E, metal, metal rod. It's the metal rod that encompasses the gold leaf. The next question. So the following activity will not generate waves. Which of the following activities will not generate with A? A fixed string plugged. If you look at that one very well, if you plug a string, even if you are plug, if you are playing guitar, it's going to generate with B. Spring stretch and released. It's going to generate with C. Stone thrown into a pool of water. You will see a ripple on the water. When you throw stone into it, it's going to generate with D. Suspended bulb. That one cannot generate with. So the correct option is option D. Why he vibrates to it is going to generate with two men standing 1,200 meters and uh, the second man is standing 2,300 meters away from a cliff. Add the echo of a ong. Calculate the difference between the time they add the echo. Give me that the speed of light in here is 330 meter per second. The formula for echo is V equals to 2x over T. So, we need to subtract to find the difference between the distance of the two men. So, using the formula, if we subtract 2,300 from uh, 1,200, that one will actually give us uh, 1,100 meters. So, that is the difference in their distance. So, the speed of sand, which is a V, is given by 330 meter per second. Substituting that back into the formula, making T the soil of formula. So, T will be equal to 2 multiplied by 1,100 divided by the, the V. That is the velocity. That is 330. So, from the calculation, 2 multiplied by 1,100 divided by T, T, zero. So the final answer is T equals to 6.66 6 seconds. So if you look at the options very well, option E, when you approximate, it's going to give us 6.7 seconds. So the correct option is option E. The next question, the melting point of Nathaniel is 78 degrees Celsius. What is the temperature in Kelvin? We want to convert from Celsius to Kelvin. Very straightforward. If you want to convert from Celsius to Kelvin, it's just adding 273 degrees. So 273 plus uh, 78 degrees Celsius. 3 plus 8 will give us 11 millimeter. One. 7 plus 7, that's 14. Adding 1 to it is going to be 15. So plus 1, that's 351 Kelvin. So the correct option is. Option, option B. The next question. The capacitor has two parallel plates, 4.0 cm apart. If the potential difference between the plates is 7 volts, calculate the electric field intensity between them. So the formula for electric field intensity here is actually voltage divided by the distance voltage divided by the distance so in the question the voltage that we are giving is 7 volts the distance between the plates of the capacitor is 4 cm but we are we are to convert that centimeter to standard units so we convert to meter so that will be 4 divided by 100 and that one will give us a uh, 0.04. So 7 divided by 0.04 is going to give us E equals to 175. 
So 175 volts per meter. If you look at the correct option there, if you convert this one to standard form, it's, it's going to give us 1.75 times 10 raised to power 2 volts per meter. So the correct option is option A. The next question. A particle of charge Q was projected at an angle 30 degree into a magnetic field with a velocity of 4 times 10 raised to power 7 meter per second. If it experienced a force F, express the magnetic force density in terms of the given parameter. What is the formula for this? The formula is F equals to QVB sine sin theta. That is uh, the formula for force on charge moving in the magnetic field. So, the parameters that we are given there, we are given F to be F, we are giving the charge to be Q. So it's going to be Q. We are giving the velocity to be 4 times 10 raised to power 7. Then the angle is giving us 30 degrees, saying 30 degree. So we are to express the force in terms of the magnetic. So we are going to make the magnetic force. That's a B. That's Q. V, Q, V, B, sine 30 degree. So, we are going to be making this B the subject of formula. So, B will be equals to F divided by Q multiplied by 4 times 10 raised to power 7 multiplied by sine 30. So, if you press sine 30, sine 30 is, uh, is 0 0.5. So, if you find the half of uh, 4, times 10 raised to power, power 7 is going to give us <coughs> B equals to F over Q multiplied by 2 times 10 raised to power times 10 raised to power, power 7. If you look at the correct option very well, uh, it's the same thing as option A. Option A is F. So you can rearrange it to become F divided by what? Divided by 2.0 times 10 raised to power 7 Q. So the correct option is option A. The next question. Yeah, to the next question. A transformer with 5,500 tons in its primary is used between a 240 volt AC supply and a 120 volt K2. Calculate the number of tons in the secondary. So under transformer, the, the right formula for that solution is EMF of the secondary divided by EMF of the primary equals to number of tons in the secondary divided by number of tons in the primary. From giving parameters on the board, uh, we can see the number of tons in the primary to be 5,500. We are looking for the number of tons in the secondary. Now, the first, the direct AC supply here will be the number, well, sorry, will be the EMF of the primary. So the EMF of the primary is 240 volts. So where the one that is connected to it will be the EMF of the secondary. So that's 120. Making NS the subject of the formula, we will discover that uh, 120 multiply by 5,500 tons divided by 240. So from the calculation, 120 multiply by 5,500 divided by 240. 120. So from the calculation, the correct answer is uh, 2,750 tons. So looking at the option, the correct option is option B. To the next question. Energy loss in a transformer due to it in the core is reduced by using dash. So when it is lost in transformer, it can be lost due to the kind of uh, conductor we are using. So to prevent it loss, we need to, uh, to make sure that we use a low resistance wire or we increase the size of the wire 
we are using. So the correct option is option C, by reducing the what? The resistance. So when the resistance of a conductor is very high, it will be generated. So in order for it not to be generated, we need to what? To reduce the resistance of the conductor we are using. So the correct option is option, option C. Next question. Correct I in an AC circuit. Given by this equation, I equals to 15 sine 80 pi pi t. Where t is the time in second, calculate the RMS value of the current. Now, that is a general equation of AC. Given by I equals to I naught sine 2 pi f t. If you look at the equation very well, I naught is the peak value of the current. So what is standing in the place of I naught is, is 15. So it's automatically the peak value of our current is 15 ampere. And there is a relationship between the peak value of current and the RMS value, given by I RMS equals to peak value of the current divided by root 2. So from there, the final answer will now be 15 divided by root 2. Since the answer is not in short form, we need to calculate that as 15 divided by root 2. So the correct option is IRMS equals to 10.6 ampere. Looking at the options, the correct option is option C, 10.6 ampere. Next question. Which of the following statements is not correct? Which of the following statements is not correct? A. Matter is, com is made up of molecules. That statement is correct because one of the assumptions of particle nature of matter is that matter are made up of tiny, tiny particles called molecules. B, the molecules of matter are in constant state of motion. That statement is correct. Number C, Brainerd motion is an evidence of particle nature of matter is correct. D, molecules of liquid are stationary. That one is not correct because molecules of liquid are always in the state of motion except we put them in the container. Then the atoms combine to form molecules. That's correct. So the correct option is option D. Molecules of liquid are, are stationary. In which of the following set of substance, substances the, is the arrangement in decreasing order of viscosity? In which of the following set of substances is the arrangement in decreasing order of viscosity so from the highest viscosity to lowest viscosity. Let's look at it very well. Engine oil, grease, and water. We all know that grease is most viscous than engine oil. So this one is not correct. Option B, engine oil, water, grease. is not correct because water is less viscous than, than grease. Option C, grease, engine oil, and petrol. I think this one is very correct. It's very correct. Mm -hmm. Grease is more viscous than enjoy, and enjoy is more viscous than can, uh, petrol. Option D, grease, petrol, and enjoy. This one is not a correct order because petrol is less viscous to enjoy. Option E, water, grease. This one is not correct. So the correct option is option C, grease, enjoy, and petrol. Question and addition. What's question? That is the first of attraction between molecules of the same substance. What's addition? That is the force of attraction between molecules of different substances. So, Roma figure one, are forces of attraction. Roma figure two, exist between molecules of mercury. Roma figure three, exist between water and glass molecules. So they said, which of the following statements is or are not correct? Going back to Roma figure one, Addition and question are forces of attraction is very correct because there's no way you define question and addition that, that you not mention the word force of attraction. So Roma figure one is correct. Roma figure two, the two of them, does they, do they exist between molecules of mercury? No, because mercury is a substance. So the force that exists between mercury alone you know, is the force that exists between uh, molecules of the same substance. That's question. So of Roma figure two is not correct. Roma figure theory exists between water and glass molecule. Water and glass, they are different substances. So the only force that will that exist between them is adhesive force or adhesion. So 
you will see that it's only Roma figure one that is uh, correct. So the correct option is option A. Next question. The ionization of energy of energy of hydrogen atom was accurately predicted by who? So the correct answer is Nebor. Nebor is the person that correctly predicts the ionization of hydrogen atom to be 13.6 electron volts. So the correct option is option E, Nebor. Next question. The, the effects of magnetic field on gamma ray and beta particle is that gamma is hey reflected towards let's look at gamma gamma is the, is one of the emission during radioactivity so there are three particles that are emitted during radioactivity alpha beta and gamma one of the properties of gamma is that gamma has no charge so it's neutral so because it has no charge it can neither be deflected in electric field or in magnetic field so the word deflection in gamma cannot be correct so it means option a and option b they are out of it now let's go to option c not deflected why beta is slightly deflected now let, let's go to properties of beta particle one of the properties of beta particle is beta particle is negatively charged and as well it's going to be deflected to the in electric field it's going to be deflected to the positive side of the plate because of the uh, unlike charges. Then in magnetic field, beta particle will be strongly deflected to the north pole. Beta particle will be strongly to deflected to what? To the north pole. Now, looking at the option, option C, gamma is not affected, correct? Why beta is slightly? So the word slightly is not correct there. Let's go to option D. Gamma is not affected Why beta is strongly deflected towards the north pole. This is the correct option. Option E will not be correct because it's strongly deflected towards the south pole. So the correct option is option, option D. The next, a radioactive material has an initial mass of uh, 20 grams and half-life of 5 days. Determine the number of days it will take 15 grams of the atom to decay. So I will give, write out the expressions to solve the problem. First of all, there is an expression that says number decayed equals to the original atom present at the initial count rate minus the final at the final count rate. There is another one that says this is making ratio equals to number of initial atom divided by number the many. Another one says that R equals to 2 raised to power n, where this n is the number of half-lives. Then the one that relates the half-life another time. So we have number of half-life equals to the time divided by the half-life. So, using all these expressions, we'll be able to get the answers to the questions. So, let's start from the beginning. The number decayed is given by 15 from the question. So, 15 equals to number of the original atom. Present initial count rate is uh, 20 gram minus N2. So, let's get our N2 first. So, bringing this to the... So, we have minus 5 equals to minus N2. Therefore... N2 equals to 5, uh, five grams. So, using this expression now, R equals to the N1, which is 20, divided by the N2, 5. So, our R will be given as, uh, as 4. Since we are going for here, let's use this uh, expression here. So, R is 4, so we are having 2 raised to power 2, which is same as 4, equals to 2 raised to power N. So our n equals to equals to two. Since we have got seen the number of half lives, we can now go back to this expression, which is n equals to two over t. So two equals to this time we are looking for is the time the answer to calculate that is to take 15 gram to decay. So that's t divided by the half life. The half life in the question is five days divided by five. So therefore, t equals to two multiplied by five. Our t is given as ten days. If you look at the options. The correct option is option option B. Which type of radiation does not originate within the nucleus? A alpha, B beta, C gamma, D neutral. If you look at the first theory, those are the emissions during radioactivity. And when you are talking about radioactivity, we are talking about this, the disintegration of the nucleus of an element. So they are originating for even neutral. Neutron is present in the nucleus because inside the nucleus we have proton and a neutron. So the X-ray 
X-ray is not part because X-ray, they are gotten from electrons. So the answer is option, option E, X-ray. The next question, excited electron falls back to the ground state and emits a photon of wavelength 1.02 times 10 to the power minus 5 meter. Calculate the energy of photon, given that H, which is Planck's constant, 6.6 .6 times 10 to the power minus 34 joule seconds, and the speed of light is given by 3.0 times 10 to the power 8 meter per second. The right formula for the question is energy of photon is given by HC over lambda. So, from the formula, our h is 6.6 .6 times 10 raised to power minus 34 multiplied by the speed of light, 3.0 times 10 raised to power 8 divided by the wavelength from the question is 1.02 times 10 raised to power minus 5 per meter. So, calculating everything together, 6.6 .6 exponential minus 34 multiply by 3 exponential 8. Now is 1.98 times 10 raised to power minus 25 divided by 1.02 times 10 raised to power minus 5. Dividing everything there, so E, the correct option is 1.94 times 10 raised to power minus 22. So that's the answer. Looking at the options, the correct option is option D, 1.94 times 10 raised to power minus 20 joules. To the next question. Electrons with maximum energy of 1.94 times 10 raised to power minus 19 joules were liberated when the metal was illuminated by light of frequency 7.5 times 10 raised to power 14 x. Calculate the work function of the metal. So, the work function of the metal is given by HF minus, uh, minus E. So, from there, our HF, H is a plus constant, which is 6.6 .6 times 10 raised to power minus 34, multiplied by the frequency of the light, which is 7.5 times 10 raised to power 14, minus the energy of the electron, which is 1.94 times 10 raised to power minus uh, 19 joules. So calculating everything together, multiply by 7.5 exponential 14. So this is 4.95 times 10 raised to power minus 19 minus 1.94 times 10 raised to the power minus 19. So the correct option is a 3.01 uh, times 10 raised to the power minus uh, 19 two. So looking at the option that are there, so you see that the correct option is option B, 3.01 times 10 raised to the power minus 19 joules. To the next uh, question, the particle nature of light cannot be used to explain which of the following phenomena. If you look at uh, light, light has a wave particle duality. So it can behave as a wave and also it can behave as a particle. But they are talking about particle nature now. So we are going to be limiting ourselves to particle. So first one, corruption effect is a particle nature. Light absorption is a particle nature. Light emission is a particle nature. If you look at option D, light reflection. Reflection is a property of wave. Then photoelectric effect is a particle nature. So the correct option is option D, which is a wave nature of uh, light. To the next uh, question. A machine is rated 29 horsepower. What is its power in kilowatts? Given that uh, one horsepower is equals to 0 0.746 uh, kilowatts. We have been given that one, one horsepower is given by 0 0.746 kilowatts. And they ask us to calculate 29 horsepower. As simple, you just, you just say uh, 20, 
9 horsepower multiplied by 0 0.746. So that's a 29 multiplied by 0 0.746. So that will give us a 21.634 kilo kilowatt. Looking at the options, the correct option is uh, option B. Option B. Next question. The magnification of the objective and eyepiece lenses of a compound microscope are 5 and 10 respectively. Calculate the magnifying power of the microscope. The formula for magnifying power of microscope is M equals to M1 multiplied by M2. So, for the objective lens is M1. The eyepiece lens is M2. So, we just say the objective is a 5. The eyepiece is, a, is 10. So, the correct answer is a 50. So, looking at the option, the correct option is a option A, 50. The next question, to produce a dry Leclerc cell. Which of the following material is not required? A, ammonium chloride. Ammonium chloride is, is required as the electrolytes of the cell. Brass cap. C, carbon rod. D, manganese dioxide. E, zinc rod. Brass cap is a component of a gold leaf electroscope. So it's not part of what is required to produce a Leclerc cell. Carbon rod is the, is the positive terminal, which is the anode. Manganese dioxide is the depolarizer, while zinc rod is the negative for terminal, which is the cathode. So the correct option is option B, brass cap. The next question. To the next question, the correct uh, sequence of transmitting electricity from generating station to consumer is through who? Before I go to the option, let me explain the way power is being generated in Nigeria. The first, the first of all, they will send all those uh, generating powers to the national grid. There, there is a step of transformer that will shoot up the voltage. So after the voltage is already high, they will now transmit those power to all stations, transmission stations using high tension cable. So the first stage is step up, followed by high tension cable, followed by step down. In our street, we are we are having step down transformers in our street. Let's look at the option. Option A, high tension lines. It's not correct. Option B, high tension line. So the two of them are starting with high tension lines. They are not correct. Option C, step down transformer. It cannot be step down. So option D, step up transformer, yeah. High tension lines, yeah. Then D, step down transformer. That is the correct order. Look at option E. Option E says step up transformer, step down transformer. So it's not, it cannot be followed by step down transformer. So after it has been step up, it must go through high tension line. So the correct option is option D. Which of the following classroom material is a machine? What's a machine? A machine is a device that makes our work easy, convenient, and faster. Or a device in which efforts apply at one end is used to overcome another force at another end, which is load. Now look at the options. Option A, shock. Option B, metal glue. Option C, pencil. Option D, sharpener. Option E, whiteboard. So if you look at the options very well, if you look at sharpener, sharpener is heavy blade in the middle. So the correct option is sharpener. It's a simple machine that we can see even in our classrooms. The next question. The following are processes. Are processes involved in generating electricity from down? When uh, we want to generate power from down, the process is summarized as follows. There is a water that will be falling through a narrow opening. So there will be a pathway for that water to flow with high velocity. So that water will now be used to rotate the turbine. And after the tur turbine has been rotated, electricity will be what? Generated. Now let's look at the correct uh, order. Number one, falling water through, falling water rotates the turbine. Two, water flows through a narrow opening. Three, the dynamo generates electricity. Which of the following gives the correct sequence? If you look at it very well, the first one will be that water flows through a narrow opening. So, number two will be the first one. 
the, the, the next stage is that the water will rotate the turbine, followed by Roma figure one. Two, followed by Roma figure one. So look at option C. Option C, then followed by Roma figure three. The dynamo will generate electricity. So the correct option is option C. Rockets is used for dash. A, conveying equipment to space. B, earth mapping. C, earth observation. D, studying space. E, transmitting information from space. If you look at option B, it's a function of a satellite. Op uh, option C, earth observation is another function of the satellite. Studying space is another function of satellite. Transmitting information from space is another function of a satellite. But the correct option is option A. Rocket is used for conveying equipment to, to space. The next uh, information obtained from NICOMSAT 1. The full meaning of NICOMSAT 1 is uh, Nigeria Communication Satellite 1. It is used for dash A, afforestation program, B, crop yield forecast, C, disaster forecast, D, distance learning program, E, monitoring of gra grazing land. If you look at Nigeria satellites, there are two satellites that Nigeria has launched. One is a uh, Nigeria Communication Satellite 1, the other one is a uh, Nigeria Satellite, that's Nigasat 1. So, from option A to option C and option E, they are the functions of Nigasat 1. So, the only function of Nigasat 1 is actually distance learning program. So, the correct option is option D. The next question, which of the following is not an example of a of a force. You know, force is a vector quantity. A, tension. B, weight. C, friction. D, mass. E, upthrust. Weight, sorry, uh, tension is an example of a force. B, weight is also a force. C, friction is a force. D, mass is not a force. It's a scalar quantity. E, thrust is also a force. So the correct option is option D, mass. Next question. So the next question, a body moves along a circular path with uniform angular speed of uh, 0 0.6 uh, radian per second at a constant speed of 3.0 meter per second. Calculate the acceleration of the body towards the center of the circle. So that one is a centripetal acceleration given by V square over R. There is another relationship that says uh, velocity is given by angular velocity multiplied by radius. So making the radius the subject of formula here, yeah? so we're having R to be equals to V divided by omega. So the speed here yeah, is theory divided by the angular velocity, which is uh, 0 0.6 radar per second. So if we divide theory divided by 0 0.6, so that will give us 5 uh, meter. So our radius is 5 meter. Coming back to the formula, A equals to the speed is a uh, 3.0 divided by the radius 5. So we, are, we, are, we will square that speed. So that's 3 square, which will give us 9 divided by 5. So 9 divided by 5, that will give us a uh, Acceleration to be 1.8 meter per second square. Looking at the option, the correct option is option D, 1.8 meter per second square. To the next uh, question. To the next question, which of the following is a derived uh, quantity? We know the fundamental quantities, there are about seven in number. Mass, length, time, temperature, electric current, amount of substance, and luminous intensity. So, which of the following is a derived unit? So, derived units are the units of derived quantities. So, option A, ampere. Ampere is a unit of current, and that is a fundamental unit. Option B, kilogram, is the unit of a mass. That is a fundamental unit. Second is unit of time. That is another fundamental unit. Home is unit of resistance. Resistance is not a fundamental quantity. Therefore, 
Resistance will be a derived quantity, so O will be a derived unit. Look at option E. Kelvin is a unit of temperature. Temperature is a fundamental quantity. So the correct option is option D. O is a derived unit. The next uh, question. A boy timed 20 oscillations of a certain pendulum three times and obtained the following figures. 44.3 seconds, 45.4 seconds, and... 45.7 seconds respectively. Calculate the mean period of uh, oscillation of the pendulum. The mean period of oscillation, because the boy got T the time. So we are going to add the times together. That's uh, T me equals to T1 plus uh, T2 plus uh, T3. Everything divided by T. So that will actually be 44. Point T plus 45.4 plus 45.7. Everything divided by T. So the calculation will be 44.3 plus 45.4 plus uh, 45.7. So everything gave us uh, 135.4 divided by T. So, 45.1. If you look at the option, the correct option is option E, 45.1. A particle starts from rest and moves with a constant acceleration of 0 0.5 meter per second square. Calculate the time taken by the particle to cover a distance of uh, 25 meter. So, the equation of motion that will solve the question is S equals to UT plus half AT squared. From the question, we are told that the particle start from rest. That will make the initial velocity to become zero. So automatically, everything becomes zero. So our distance from the question is 25 equals to half multiplied by the acceleration of the, of the particle is 0 0.5. Then uh, Multiply by t square. We are looking for the time taken for that particle. So from there, if you cross multiply two here, so we have 50 equals to 0 0.5 uh, t, t square. So t square equals to 50 divided by 0 0.5. If you divide anything by half, it's going to be multiplied by two. So that will be. T square equals to 100. So when you find the square root of both sides, so T equals to 10 seconds. So looking at the option, the correct option is option C, 10 seconds. The next question, the expansion of solids can be considered a disadvantage in this. The expansion of solids can be considered disadvantage in dash. A, fire alarm system is an advantage. Because we are using the fire alarm system. B, thermostat is an advantage. The vetting of a steel plate is an advantage. Balance wheel of a wash. So when the balance wheel of your wash expands, that means that wash is, uh, is going to spoil. So it's going to be a disadvantage. Then fitting rim of a wheel, so it's an advantage. So the correct option is option D, balance wheel of a wash.